So in this video, we're going to talk about dissecting a parabola um, or a graph of a quadratic function. So a quadratic function makes this U shape right here, which is we call a parabola. So let me write that. Okay. So on this parabola, parabola, we have a few key terms up here that we can use. So vertex is the first thing. And so the vertex is going to be down in this box right here. So this point right here is called the vertex. Um, it's also called a max or a min. And in this case, this would be called a min because it's the lowest point on the graph. Okay. So it's a vertex, and it will also be a max or a min. Um, now how we would write that, let's put some numbers in this graph to write the order pair. And then this would be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. So this vertex right here, you would list it as an order pair. So the x value is a 6, and the y value is a negative 5. So you would say 6, comma, negative 5 is your vertex. Okay. Next thing up there is the y-intercept, which is going to be right here. So we're going to say the y-intercept is in this box. Okay. You list the y-intercept as 0, comma, a y-value. Okay. So let's pretend that this crosses at a 2. So our y-intercept would be 0, 2. And again, y-intercept is just where your line crosses the y-axis and the y-axis is up and down on your graph, okay? Um, let's jump to axis of symmetry. So symmetry, think of same on both sides. And so this dotted line right here is the axis of symmetry. Okay. So the axis of symmetry is going to go right through your vertex, and it will always go through the vertex. And you write it like a line, um, the equation of a line. And since it goes up and down always, it's going to be x equals a number, and it's going to be the number that it hits on the x-axis. So for example, this axis of symmetry would be x equals 6. Okay? It will also always be the x value in your vertex. Um, so the next thing we have are the x-intercepts, zeros, and roots, and they actually all mean the same thing. So x-intercept, roots, zeros, and you may even hear solutions. So those are all words to describe where your parabola crosses the x-axis. Okay, so how you would write the x-intercepts, the roots, the zeros, the solutions would be x comma zero. So for example, this root or solution would be one comma zero. And same thing over here, this um, solution would be 11 comma zero. So that's called a root, um, a zero x-intercept or solution. Okay, so the reason it's called zeros is it's when x, or it's when y is a zero. So it's where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, so that are, those are the parts of a quadratic equation. So the last thing um, is the domain and range. So the domain with a parabola is always going to be all real numbers. So we do that with an R with a line through it. And then for range, it's either going to be Y is greater than or equal to a number, or it's going to be Y is less than or equal to a number. Why is my board freezing? Depending on um, if it's opening up or if it's opening down. So in this case, the lowest point that the domain went was a negative 5, and then it went up for forever. So our range 
would be y is greater than or equal to because it goes up and then the lowest it hit was a negative 5. Okay, so again, those are the important parts of a parabola that you need to know. So if you'll turn the page, it's going to look like this, and then you get to label um, those parts the same. So let me actually copy and paste this word bank onto the next page. So I want you to use these vocabulary words to label in these boxes, okay? So you try these and we'll go over them. Looking at this parabola, here is our vertex up here. Um, so I labeled it vertex. It's also a maximum because it's the highest point of a parabola. And then the vertex is going to be located at negative 2, positive 4. So I wrote that order pair. Um, over here, again, this is where your parabola is crossing the x-axis. So it's called the x-intercept, the roots, the solutions are zeros. So you could use any of those words to describe these two points. And then that would be a four, negative 4, comma 0, and then a 0, 0. Um, what's special about this point is it's a x-intercept and it's a y-intercept. So I wrote the x-intercept and it was a y-intercept, which was at 0, 0. And then lastly, the axis of symmetry is always going to be a dotted line through your vertex. And again, it's an x equals a number, and it's x equals 2 because it hits the x-axis at a 2. Um, some things to notice, again, the axis of symmetry will always go through that x part of your vertex. When you come down here to domain, again, it will always be RL numbers. And then for the range, you're going to have y because it's a y value. The reason it's a less than sign is because it's less than, it's going down for forever. And then 4 was the highest it went. And notice the range will always include your um, y value of your vertex. Okay, so a couple things that will always happen. And that's how you label a parabola um, for important information. Um, but the next thing we're going to look at is some tables. So here is what um, a quadratic uh, table looks like. So notice that, again, these numbers are all going up by 1. But then notice we have 6, 0, negative 4, negative 6, negative 6 repeats, negative 4, 0, and 6. So I went down and then back up again okay so quadratic again is always going to go either up and then back down or it's always going to go down and then back up so the tables are going to kind of mirror each other on the y um, but the first thing we're going to do is draw a rough sketch of this graph okay and what i mean by drawing a rough sketch whoo, is drawing an x and a y axis and kind of labeling some numbers so I need to start at a negative 3 and then go negative 2 and negative 1. And then 0. And then I've got 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then let me get some numbers I'm on the y. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5 negative 6. Okay, so now I can plot these points on my table and see what the graph looks like. So I'm going to go to negative 3, positive 6. So negative 3 all the way up to a 6. Make a point. Um, negative 2, 0. So negative 2 and then 0. Um, negative 1, negative 4. Be down here. Um, 0, negative 6, um, 1, negative 6, 2, negative 4, 3, 0, and then 4, 6. Okay, so if I roughly connect those points, I'm going to get a really bad drawing of a U-shaped parabola, okay? And so let's take a look at some things. So notice here, this was our um, Y-intercept. So here is our Y-intercept. So your Y-intercept is when X equals 0, okay? Some other things to notice, this negative 2, 0, and 3, 0, 
which would be right here. These are your um, zeros or your x-intercept. So that is when y is a zero. Okay. And then the last thing is your vertex, which you really can't see in this table because it would be in between. Um, so your vertex is going to be down here. And it's going to be in between a 1 and a 0, so 0.5 and then maybe 7. So it's going to be in between um, those two numbers. Oops, sorry, negative 7. Okay, so your vertex and your table, you're going to see the numbers um, go up or go down and then go back up again. So the vertex is kind of in between right here. Okay, so let's answer some questions about this graph. So it says, what is the vertex? Is it a max or a min? So again, here is our vertex. Um, it is going to be a minimum because it's our lowest point on the graph. So min because it's the lowest point. And then we said our vertex was at a 0 0.5, negative 7. Um, the next question is, what are the zeros? And again, the zeros mean the x-intercept. So if I switch back over here, the x-intercept was a negative 2, 0, and a 3, 0. Okay. What is the y-intercept? So the y-intercept is down here when x is a 0, and your y-intercept was 0, negative 6. Um, what is the equation for the axis of symmetry? So the axis of symmetry, again, is that dotted line through your vertex. And so our vertex was at 0.5. Um, so that means our axis of symmetry is going to be x equals 0.5. Um, what's the domain? Again, domain is always all real numbers. Um, what's the range? So we're going to start with y. And then I need to look at this graph. So this graph is going up for forever. So that means it's going to be a greater than or a equal to sign. And then you need to find the lowest number that this graph went. So the lowest the graph went was at a negative 7 down here. And again, remember that range is always going to be the y point of your um, vertex. And then again, the axis of symmetry is always going to be this x part of your um, vertex. Last question is how many solutions are there? And what that means is how many times did the parabola cross the x-axis? So we're going to look back at our rough graph that we made. And I saw that it crossed once, and it crossed again over here. So we would say that it has two solutions. Okay. All right, and so this is how you would look at a table um, and pull this information um, from the graph. So again, if they give you a table, you are going to have to draw a rough sketch unless you're just super awesome um, at looking at tables. Um, I'm not, and I'm a more visual learner, and so I have to kind of see the graph to see if it's a max or a min or to look at the x-intercepts, okay? But if you're good at a table, again, the x-intercepts are when y is a 0, and the y-intercept is when x is a 0, and that's so confusing, okay? But... These are the identifying parts of a quadratic function, and thank you for watching.